Pastor Varun and Pastor Don Lahaprasit would like to welcome you to the following message from New Hope International Church, Seattle, Washington. Here is Pastor Lau's dynamic teaching that will change your life with love, hope, and peace in Jesus Christ. I would like to share what happened in the meeting. In, I went there for four days. I remember, you remember the Bible say that, go and preach the gospel over the world. And in my name, you shall cast out demons. I remember on Sunday, the, the Sunday before I left, God spoke to me. There's so many demons in Thailand. This time you're going to go and cast them out. And I didn't know what's going to happen. I just went with faith and obedience. So when they picked me up on the air, at the airport, they took me to my dad's house right away and just take a shower, chain, and went to the church. No rest. So I arrived at the church around, I arrived Bangkok about noon, 2 p.m. I, I was in the church. And it's amazing how hungry people were. I was so tired. I was jet lag, having jet lag. I, 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 didn't, I, I was not ready to do anything. I was just so tired, but they want me to go there. So when I stepped up on the podium or pulpit. I just stand there. I, don't, I didn't know what to say because I was so tired. Suddenly, the Holy Spirit came down. I didn't preach. The whole room was drunk in the Holy Ghost. For two and three hours, people didn't want to go home, just drunk and drunk and laugh and people get touched. Demon came out. I didn't even lay hand. I did not lay hand at all. I just stand there. Looking at people, demon come out for people, and, and people get drunk, and, and I was standing there, God, this is amazing. The first meeting, I didn't even have, an, even have a chance to preach. People just really drunk, I mean, just in the Holy Ghost, and people got set free. And then after that, that night, we began the revival meeting that night, worship, and I tell you, it's amazing. I didn't even say the word casting out demon. I just lay hand on people and almost 50 to 60% of people, again, 20 churches came, okay, including some pastors, not only members. Every, about 60% that I lay hand on, they fell under the power and then demon came out without even say out, out or something or in Jesus' name. They just, boom. The demon came out, boom, boom, boom. And, and, um, but there was a little bit scary part in the whole thing. One young lady came in. She is short like this. And I, I didn't know her at all. She came from another church. So I lay hand on her. And at that time, people thought, um, th- thought about Steve Judge. Because when I lay hand on her, after a while, she threw me. I mean, she was so strong. She threw me into the wall. I didn't prepare that something going to happen. And you know, this young lady, five men have to hold her. She, and her eye pop out like this. And she put her tongue out and start to want to bite me. Demon. And, I was, and the, all these men pull her down and they just sit down like this and lay hand in the name of Jesus. And I was smiling in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and, and the lady just keep like this and the, the eye pop out like <laughs> the, the man who hold her down who held her down, couldn't sleep that night. Because she, he saw that eyes pop out. You know, it's so scary. I mean, just, and and, it, and the tongue came out and tried to bite me. So I just sit there and smile. In the name of Jesus, you have to go. You have to go. I just smile and just say like that. I, didn't, I was not frightened. I was not afraid at all. And eventually, demon left. We won. Amen. God taught me so many things in this meeting. And he says sometimes I lay hand and somebody fell down and God said, go back there. So I lay hand again, I lay on the shoulder and the demon starts to come out. I didn't even say anything, I just lay hand and sit there. And the demon starts to come out, you see it. Demon come out and after a while, the person laughs in the Holy Ghost. Victory. Actually, the pastor in Phuket, he has an experience. He said that, he, the demon came out of him many times already, but in this meeting, a big one. While I was moving in the Holy Ghost, God touched him 
And I lay hand on him while he was sitting on a chair. He fell on the ground, and he felt like big demon just came out of him, and he coughed it out and almost vomited. You know, and he was set free. Actually, after that, after he was set free, he came to me and said, "You know, Pastor, I have to admit to you, I was so mad at you all this time. I was mad at you. I didn't like you. I didn't like the way you preach. I didn't like the way you minister. I really hate you." But after demon came out, he came to me and said, "I repented. I'm sorry. I have bad attitude toward you. Could you please forgive me?" It's amazing. We reconcile. And he reconciled with his wife, and everything. Just I just got email from his wife this morning. Now we become one. We love each other. The church gonna go on. Actually, the the lady that this Thai doctor that uh, pastor, uh, pastor wife and pastor to to she opened her own clinic on Sunday to be a church. On Monday to Saturday is a clinic, but on Sunday she just gave the building to be a church. And I heard that this sun, past Sunday was packed already. A lot of people came to church. They're gonna have to move soon again. <laughs> Amen. So there is another situation. A lady came out. I really learned a few things. A lady came out. She is a very tiny uh, Thai lady. So I keep you no know, people line up. I lay hand, lay hand. I lay hand on her. Nothing happened. And then um, after a few minutes, she was standing in front of me like this. I was. This is the same lady. So I lay hand again. Nothing happened. So I walk by. Then boom! Somebody stand in front of me like this. The same lady again. I start to laugh like, oh, "This is weird." So I lay hand on her. Nothing happened. The fourth time she fell under the power. She came again the fifth time, sixth time. I said, "God, this lady is so hungry." And at the end of the meeting, everyone left already, but her church still sitting there on the floor talking. Suddenly, this is only about 20 people left in the room. About 2 a.m. in the morning. Suddenly, the Holy Spirit came down in that 20 people, including me. Everyone got drunk, and she just sit there. It's like a book of Acts in the upper room. She began to speak in tongue and shaking and filled with the fire of God. And God taught, showed me that this lady was so hungry for me. She never gave up on knocking on the door. That's why she kept coming to you to be lay hand on. It's amazing. Amen. You know, I learned something in this trip. Number one, it's not about churches. It's about souls. Amen. It's not about denomination. And also, I learned something is that it's not about your success. It's about obeying what God called you to do. Amen. I don't go there to take, get any success or get any reputation. I just go because I obey God. Amen. 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 That the same night, a family came to me. They talk to me until 4 a.m. This family has been Christian for a long time. I, I try to give you this testimony to show you how the file of God really set the captive free. The whole family is in trouble. The two kids didn't want to go to school. They yell at their dad and their, their mom all the time. Arr! Yell all the time, you know, teenagers. Yell, 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 yell. And the parents really, really, really trouble. And I was sitting there listening. To all of them, release their frustration on me. And I just sit until 4 a.m. listening. Oh, my dad this and my son this. I was listening. I just hook up to the Holy Ghost. And at the end, I say, these two young boys, I want to say, tell you, you need Jesus. Oh, I don't believe in Jesus. So I began to witness. And at the end, the anointing was so strong that they began to melt. And you say, okay, I accepted Jesus Christ. So they both accepted Jesus Christ that night. And the next day, one of the boys came out to be prayed for for six times. Again, the same thing, pray for me. And he fell down and he began to want to laugh and want to cry. He was shamed. I just called the dad this last night. The dad said, they stopped yelling now. Their, their relationship came back. God really restored this family. By the file of God. Amen. I say to them that if I went to Bangkok this time just for this family, it's worth my time and money. Just to restore this family that is so broken. Amen. It's amazing. Another young lady came in. She is a six years old, six months old Christian, young Thai lady. She was standing there. I will I lay hand on her. And she began to 
like want to vomit. She never heard about demon before in her life. She went to church and never thought about demon. And she and then she began to speak in tongue and just froze like this for a long time. First on the on the ground, couldn't move, get stuck on the floor, and people had to really put her sit down because she was tired. And then she be, the demon started to come out. Oh, one by one, just for a long time, she, she coughed out, she vomited demon out, and I didn't do anything. I just walked around there looking. People just oh, so a blessing to see people get set free from demonic power. And after that, their face changed, shining the glory of God. Amen. Many young kids, seven years old, six years old, came out to the prayer line. We lay hand on them. They fell under the power and they laugh on the floor for one hour. Oh, 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 like this, they laugh on the floor. You know, seven years old. It's amazing that God really moved in the country where people really, really seek God and want the anointing of God. Amen. So, there is another story that is linked to my sermon. This lady, she is a young, maybe about 23 years old lady. This is related to my preaching today. So I, you just hear the story first. Last time I went in August, she was suicidal. She wanted to commit suicide all the time. She heard demon in her house. The demon will come and knock on the door at night. This is a true story. At night time, she will hear like this on the door of her bedroom. And not, no one there. So she, so in last August, I went there and I cast out demon out of her. She was fighting with me. I mean, I told you story already last time. And we thought that it's over. But actually, when the fire of God came, you know, when you burn, you want to purify gold, you burn it with fire. So the impurity will rise up to the surface. And God will scoop out some wrong thing. You know, our life is full of junk, mental, physical, a lot of wrong misunderstanding. So God wants to scoop out one by one to cleanse us, to purify us, to become like Christ by his fire. So this lady came in the meeting, revival meeting. I was preaching about the exchange, the unreasonable exchange at the cross. And I'm talking about shame, rejection, and exchange to glory and acceptance by, from God. While I was preaching, I said that some of people are rejected because they are molested when they were young. Oh, when she heard that, she was so mad at me, she ran out of the room and didn't want to go back to the meeting because she was molested when she was young. And that bring, brought the, mem- the remembrance, the memory of when she was um, you know, sexually abused by somebody, a, another man, when she was a young girl, like a 13, 12 years old. But somebody in the church pulled her back in. She came to the prayer line and I said that you need to forgive that man. You need to let go and let God cleanse you. She was touched by God. She was fi- touched by the fire of God. After that, she was so set free. And she said, now I understand why the fire of God have to come to burn all this thing that hiding inside me that I, I kind of push it down. I don't want to let people know. So God really set her free from that bitterness and unforgiveness toward that, young, that man that abused her sexually when she was young. You know, can you imagine how many people in the world have been tortured by sin and rejection and unforgiveness like that? And thank God that God sent his fire into the church today, Amen. into the end time church. The Bible said that God is the consuming fire. Amen. And he sent his fire to come and cleanse and purge all the impurities. Even I myself was cleansed this time because I still have a lot of wrong attitudes inside me. And one thing that God really deal with me, he said, don't think about building your church, but thinking about souls. Amen. Because I, I am after soul. I'm not after building your own organization. Amen. And one thing that God really spoke to me this time in the file of God, when the file of God touched me, he said this, your joy should not be in the success of your ministry. Like what you say a while ago. Exactly what Brother Bobby said. Your joy should not be, oh, how big the church, how successful you are. 
Your joy should be this: you obey me and do what I say. Amen. If you walk in obedience, you have joy. It doesn't matter how many people actually when Jesus was hanging on the cross, there was only a few people left. Everyone was gone, but Jesus joyfully went through suffering because of obedience. So you know, I I want to explain to a lot of members here that. Success in the eyes of man and the eyes of God is different. The success in the eyes of man is big number, lots of money. But Jesus did not have a lot of money. Jesus did not have anyone follow him at that time that much. At the end of his life, success is to obey God, what He tells you to do, Amen. joyfully, cheerfully, persistently to the end of your life. Amen. Amen. I'm gonna obey God. I'm gonna obey the file of God all the days of my life. Amen. Whatever God want to say. Let's read this scripture together. Let's turn to Proverbs chapter 15, 31 to 33. Why don't you read with me? Proverbs 15, 31 to 33. One, two, three. The ear that listens to the reproof that leads to or give life will remain among the wise. He who refuses and ignores instruction and correction despises himself, but he who heeds reproof gets understanding. The reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord brings instruction in wisdom, and humility comes before honor. Let's read another one, Proverbs twenty-two four. Let's read together. The reward of humility and the reverent and worshipful fear of the Lord. Is riches and honor and life. How many people want life? How many people want honor and riches? The key is the fear of God. The key is to have a reverent fear toward the Lord. You know, when the the word of God come to you from the pulpit, some of the word may make you feel uncomfortable, may make you feel like you want to leave the room. But if you fear God, you receive correction. You receive, you know, the reproof of the Lord, and God can honor you. Amen. Let us become this kind of people. Let us become people who really fear God and obey the word of the Lord. I like to read now. I will read Second Timothy one one to eight. Today I would like to talk about the file of God again. Come back another session. I I already gave you testimony about the fire in Thailand. Now we want to talk about the file of God. In 2 Timothy 1, 1 to 8, Paul, an apostle, special messenger of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, favor, and spiritual blessing, mercy, and heart peace from God, the Father, and Christ Jesus, our Lord. I thank God, whom I worship with a pure conscience, in the spirit of my fathers, when without seat, without ceasing, I'm sorry, I remember you might day night you you day and night night and day in my prayers and when as i recall your tears i yearn to see you so that i may be filled with joy i am calling up my memories of your sincere and unqualified faith the learning of your entire personality on god in christ in absolute trust and confidence in his power wisdom and goodness a faith that first lived permanently in the heart of your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And now I am fully persuaded dwells in you also. That is why, this is a key scripture I want to emphasize today. This is what, that is why I would remind you to stir up. Everyone say stir up. Stir up. Rekindle. Everyone say rekindle. rekindle. The embers of, fan the flame of, and keep burning the gracious gift of God, the inner fire that is in you by means of the laying on of my hands with those of the elders at your ordination. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven, cringing, and founding fear, but he has given us a spirit of power, of love, and of calm and well-balanced mind Discipline and self-control. My dear brother and sister, the Bible said, Paul said that we need to stir up 
the fire of God that is in within us all the time. God fire is inside you, living inside your spirit. And God fire came to our church since 1997. The fire of God touched some of you, and fire of God really burned on the inside of you. But you should make a decision all the days of your life that you're going to be a big furnace and let the fire of God burn on the inside of you all the days of your life. Will not let the fire of God die down. Amen? Let it burn and burn and burn on the inside of you. Let the Holy Spirit make His home inside of you and let Him just move you, push you, lead you, protect you, guide you all the days of your life. Amen? And that fire God has given to the church since the day of Pentecost. And now we want that fire back to the local church. We don't want just tradition. We don't want religion. We want the fire of God. We want the Holy Spirit, the anointing to move the church. Amen. I like to explain to you. You know, I, I see, I've been Christian for 25 years now. I've seen that one of the most difficult things for Christian is to walk in the fire. Is to really let the fire of God burn on the inside and lead you. And I, I want to encourage you today to stir up the fire of God on the inside of you all the time. Let me read this scripture to you. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 from the Amplified Bible. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, no, adjust, no, no adjudging guilty of wrong for those who are in Christ Jesus, who live and walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the Spirit. My dear brother and sister, this is the problem. We have two, three parts in ourselves. Every one of us, we have body, the flesh. The flesh is still get hungry. The flesh still like to have beautiful home, nice car. The flesh still want to have a spouse, get married. And we have also mind or soul, the mental. And we have the spirit on the inside of us. How many people know where the Holy Spirit is residing? Where? Inside your spirit. So, the part that your body, the part of your life that is really born again is your spirit, not your body. That's why your hair still, some of your hair is still gray. Your, your hair is not born again yet. Amen? Your mind still not born again yet. That's why the Bible says, give your body as a living sacrifice. You need to daily lie on the altar and die to your own flesh. Amen. Is that right? And your mind, what God say in the Bible, the Bible say in Romans chapter 12, you need to renew your mind. Amen. With the word of God. I'm, I'm doing the job right now. I'm renewing your mind every Sunday through the CD, to the teaching. So God say, your mind is not completely born again yet. You still have a lot, uh, many wrong thinkings wrong ways of you know God, do you remember the Bible says God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts yeah. I thought that I'm, I was right but many times when God showed me I was wrong my mind was wrong and that is a stronghold that is the battlefield that the devil wants to fight with you yeah. now this is a problem many Christians are led by their mind and their flesh we call carnal Christians the word carnal in the Greek language means meat. Meat, that, like steak, meat. You are led by your meat, your flesh. You are led by your mind, but not by your spirit. That's why Paul said to Timothy, Stir up the fire of God. May the fire of God burn and take over the mind and take over your body. If, you burn, if the fire of God die down, what happens? Who's going to come up? Your mind. And your flesh. And that's why we see a lot of Christians are like this. On Sunday, they come get touched by God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, blah, 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 blah. On Sunday for two hours, they are led by the Spirit. But when they walk out of the room, get into the car, the flesh rise up, they, they let the fire of God die. They quench it. And the flesh come up and they start to turn to their wife and yell, Honey! Honey! 
Ouch. And they start to curse and start to cuss and start to say bad things. On Monday to Saturday night, they were living by the leading of the flesh and of their carnal mind. They treat their wife like, you know, unprecious thing. They are not sensitive. They are not, they are not led by the Spirit. And then on Sunday, come in the room, oh, worship God again, singing, you know, beautiful song. And then they are in the Spirit for two hours. And they walk out again in the car. I'm hungry. Oh, the preacher preached too long. Oh, he talked about giving. Oh, I'm mad at him. Started me in the flesh again. Is that happening? Yeah, it's happening. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't put the fire out. Let the fire of God burn on the inside. Let the Spirit of God lead you. Let the Spirit of God control you. Not your mind, not your flesh. Amen. Remain red hot all the time. Amen. Take, stay on the plate. Let the fire burn. Stay on the plate 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Amen. Stay hot. Amen. Don't cool down. I tell you, there are a few things that can cool you down. How many people want to know how, what can cool you down into the flesh again? You know, our life, uh, this, this, this is the, 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 the battle. Either you walk in the spirit or by the fire, or you walk by the flesh or by the mind. You should keep fighting like this all day long. So you need to keep in the fire seven days a week. And I want to tell you, there are a lot of fire exti- extinguishers around. There's a lot of blank, uh, wet blanket around you that want to put out a fire in your life. Wet blanket. Amen? Or fire extinguisher. Number one, what is that? The first thing that quench the fire is your own flesh. That is your, your, your brain, your mind here. You notice one thing? When I start to lay hand, I call people out. And you sit there. The first thing that happens is that your mind, your brain start to scream. Ah, again! Lay hand again! This is stupid. This is crazy in this shirt. Ah, your, your mind scream, but you don't say it. You, you sit like a look like a holy man. But in your mind, like, ah. this pastor is crazy. Your mind will scream. Because your mind doesn't like Holy Spirit. Doesn't like to be convicted. Doesn't like to be burned by the fire of God. I'm not talking about you, any one of you here, okay? I'm just talking about general. General. Okay. So your mind will scream. You need to shut it up. You need to shut up your brain. Thank God for the brain. Because the brain, God gives you the brain, the temporal lobe, frontal lobe, and occipital lobe, and parietal lobe. All this, and, and, and hypothalamus, and thalamus, and brainstem, and putamen, and all this part of your brain for good reason. He gave all these things for you to receive the information so you can understand language. And thank God I can understand your thinking a while ago. Otherwise, it would be boring to me to not understand English. Your mind is used to understand, to receive the information, to digest the information, and to do things in the natural. Your mind is for the natural. But your spirit and the fire of God inside your spirit is for the supernatural. Okay. For example, in the morning you wake up, you use your mind to pick up the right clothing, the right outfit, the, the correct color. You don't come to church with red and green. Red shirt and green pants. Because your mind is still okay. Oh, except Christmas. If you come to church... <laughs> you get on me. <laughs> you see, you, you, you use your mind to comb your hair. You use your mind to drive a car and brush your teeth and, and, and pick the right food to eat. Is that right? Your mind is still working, but even though your mind is important and you need it to walk across the street, you need to look for the car to see the car is not passing by. But on a daily basis, you are not led by your mind. Your flesh, you need to die to the flesh, crucify your flesh. You need to Shut up your mind and let by the fire of God 
inside your spirit. If you can do that, everything. I'm not talking about only ministry, business, choosing a spouse. Don't go by just oh, long eyelash, beautiful hair. Oh, look at her eyes. Oh, your flesh kind of rise up. No, no, no. Listen to the spirit inside you. Is this lady God prepare for my being my wife, become my wife? Or you don't, don't listen to the flesh. Listen to the spirit, so you will not make mistake. Amen. Here, listen to inside here, the Spirit of God. I always listen to here. I don't listen to here. As I, again, in my search, my operation, every time I operate on people, I will, actually two days ago, I operate on a 27-year-old man with the largest tumor I have ever seen in my life. This big, in the frontal lobe. And the tumor invaded into the deep part of the brain. And when it comes to that point, I have to think, should I take that tumor out or he may be paralyzed? You know what I want? I still have to fire inside me. God, Holy Spirit, tell me, should I take it out? I'm listening. So my antenna went up and I listened to the file of God. And I listened to the file of God, to the the leading of the file of God inside me. God said, go for it. Take the whole tumor out. He will be fine. I did, but I was scared. My mind can, oh, this is, if he's paralyzed, I'm going to be in trouble. But I did take the whole tumor out, very big, very deep. He woke up, I walked in this yesterday morning, he hugged me, he cried, he said, thank you doctor, you're so wonderful. He is 100% normal, no deficit at all. (laughs) You need to stir up the fire, don't let the flesh, which is your fire, (laughs) extinct. Extinguisher. Help me one more time. Extinguisher. Extinguisher. (laughs) It's a difficult word for me. Okay. You understand what I'm talking about. (laughs) The second one that will put out a fire is the temperature of the world. Be careful. The world will try to put out your fire. Amen. Amen. If you stay in Las Vegas too long... You walk around those machines, ching, ching, ching. Be careful. The fire is going to be put out. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're going to walk on the Waikiki beach, go down with the Bible. Amen. Don't look around too much. Amen. Scary. The fire will be put out. Amen. Hallelujah. The world, the temperature of the world is cold. And it will get rid of the fire inside you. Another thing, another one that will put the fire out of you is lukewarm people. Lukewarm Christians. You have to be careful. They will pull you down. They will say, oh, you know, don't be too hot. Don't be too hot for God. Just enjoy your life. You know what I mean? Be careful with lukewarm people. Number four. This is another one that will put out the fire of God. Familiarity. you familiar. You know, can you imagine the disciple, the 12 disciples was walking with Jesus, the most anointed man in the world. But they get used to him. Can you imagine Satan, the worship leader in heaven, was in heaven around the most anointed person in the world, the most powerful, that is God himself. But he, take, he took the presence of God for granted. He made it family. Oh, this is another one. Another laying on of hands, another move of God, so what? You know, we have to be careful in this church Amen. because you get used to me. Amen. You see me every Sunday, you say, ah, oh, pass allow again. This guy, <laughs> you know what? Then you quench the fire inside me. You don't get the fire that God wants to give to the church. Because you get, that's why when Bobby come up to sing a while ago, I make decision, I'm going to honor this man, he is anointed. I'm not going to look at his age, I'm not going to look at... Uh, one thing you need to understand, you need to honor the anointing of a man. When you don't get family, you anoint, you, you honor the anointing, oh, you receive. Amen. And the fire of God started, when I listened to his singing a while ago, the fire of God burning on the inside of me. Because I don't... Take this for granted. I don't take the anointing for granted. We need to honor the anointing. Amen. Yes. Don't take the word of God for granted. You know, our God is like a daddy, a father. 
How many times? How many? Let me ask. How many people are fathers in this room? Raise your hand up. Do you notice one thing that you need to remind your kids many times about eating on time, going to bed, brushing their teeth, going to study? Is that right? You need to remind them again and again. The same thing. God will remind you again and again. Therefore, when you listen to the word of God, listen to it as if the first time in your life. Don't take the word of God for granted. Oh, I know it all. I've been to Bible school. I master degree. I'm diff. I know everything in the Bible. I can read the Bible upside down. I know everything. If you come with that attitude, you quench the fire of God. You need to be hungry. Like this is the first time. Uh, uh, I want the fire. I want the word of God to come. The, the word is like a, the wood that come to get the fire burning. Amen. You need to have that attitude that the word of God is the first time I never listened to this before. Even the same message, you need to listen to it like first time in your life. When I listen to Pastor Caesar, I never think, "Oh, he is a Caesar pastor." No, no, he is a man of God. I'm gonna, yes, yes, Amen, yes. Is that right? You need to have that attitude all the time. It's like the first time in your life. Don't get too familiar with pastors. Don't get too familiar with the Word of God, with the Spirit of God. Be hungry, like that lady that I mentioned about. That came to the prayer life for six times. Like uh, that young boy that just gets saved, and he came to the prayer line many times. I talked to him last night. I said, "Could you please listen to the word of God more?" I call him up in Thailand. Amen. So we need to have that attitude. Today is a new day. Today is a new oil. Today is a new anointing. Amen. Don't think about the anointing ten years ago when you spoke first spoke in tongues. No, today is a new day for God to do something in your life. If God is is gonna raise up the new generation Amen. to touch the world, Amen. 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 God is not gonna use the old generation that died already ten years ago. God gonna use you and me, this generation, to touch this generation. So we need a new oil of God. We need a new fire. We need to keep burning and led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Number five that caused the fire to be extinguished is the fear of man. Big time. Amen. Amen. Yesterday, I have a chance to read in the internet about a preacher who dare not say Christ in the TV. And I was so, I, I understand because he wants people to come to his church. But, but at the same time, you fear man. You know, if Larry King interview me in the, in the TV, I'm going to say, Christ is the answer. Amen. Jesus. Amen. I'm not a chairman of Jesus' name. Amen. I don't care if you don't want to come to my church. I'm not here to please you. I'm going to please God. Amen. Amen. Don't be man pleaser. Be God pleaser. Amen. Amen. Don't fear man. Because the fear of man is going to quench the fire of God in your life. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Therefore, we should not be ashamed of the name of Jesus. We should not water down the name of Jesus. We should not water down the file of God. We should not water down the work of the Spirit. We should not water down the Word of God. We should not water down the, the things that God wants to do in the church. We should be bold. That's why a while ago Paul said uh, Paul say like this to Timothy. Like, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven, cringing, and founding fear. You know what fear is that? Fear of being rejected. Fear of being kicked out from denomination. Fear of, fear of man. People will reject you. People will leave the church. Amen. 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 I don't, I'm not afraid people leave this church. Amen. Amen. I'm going to preach the truth. Yes. If they like it, they like it. If they don't like it, it's too bad. But I believe that people need to hear the truth Amen. instead of hearing the, the thing that tickles their ears. Amen. Help everyone say, the fear of man, fear of man. is not in me. Hallelujah. Be God pleaser. Don't worry about being accepted. It's okay if people don't accept you. The fire of God, when the fire of God come upon you, you will not be popular. People will not like you. But it will bring liberty, freedom to those lost souls. I believe the fire of God is for the lost soul. It's not for, for just only religious people in the church. The fire of God will go and save the lost soul. Amen. 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 And in fact, the lost love the fire of God. Actually, in this trip, we have about 15 non-believers show up in a meeting, which is quite a lot already for Thailand. It's a Buddhist country. 
All 15 people accepted Christ. Amen. Everyone accept Christ. God come out to be prayed for. Amen. So, the fire of God is for the Lord, so don't be afraid of man. Hallelujah. And the last one that shut the fire off is your own head. <laughs> your own human reasoning. Amen. Your own religious thinking. Amen. Oh, I used to go to church where they just sing a few songs and preach a little bit and go home. You know, I, I, this is weird. Why God is moving? Why people laugh? Oh, by the way, why, why people was laughing in Thailand? God spoke to me. Very profound. God spoke to me like this. Son, do you think that I will come back to meet a sad bride? How many people... When, how many people want to walk on the aisle to get married with a woman who... Oh, it's terrible. I'm so sad. I married this guy. Oh, no. He wants to come back to see, to meet a joyful bride. So the joy of God is for the church. We should be joyful people. Amen. Amen. When we meet Jesus, we jump up and down and say, Oh, good, hallelujah. We smile, we laugh. Amen. 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 <laughs> There's one lady in Thailand that is so funny. She is only 17 years old. Every time I look at her face, she laughs. I, I thought I looked weird or something. <laughs> when I look at her, she starts to get drunk and laugh. And laugh for one hour. Just laugh. Her name is J. Uh, yeah, J. Something like that. J. I think J. Yet she just laughed on the floor. And she's only 17 years old. The joy of the Lord is something God is going to put in the bride, his bride in the end time. Amen. 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 But we should not follow our head. Because our head will say it in a different way. Be careful. Don't follow your head. Follow the spirit. Let's say at the same time. I will, I will. Follow, follow the file of, of God who is in my spirit. I shut off my brain, but I burn up the fire of God on the inside of me. Look at what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verses 5 to 6. For those who are according to the flesh are controlled by its unholy desires. You see, your flesh is not going to benefit you. They have unholy desire. Set their mind on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit and are controlled by the desires of the Spirit, the fire of God on the inside of you, controlled by the desire of the fire, of the Spirit. Set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. Now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason, everyone say reason. reason. That, that's why the fire of God has a hard time dealing with people who are intellectual, people who are smart, Oh, PhD, MD, all these people, very difficult to get into the fire of God. Do you know why? Because they sit there and reason God. What's going on here? They try to analyze God by their own brain. I tell you, your three kilogram brain cannot analyze God. <laughs> Only three kilograms. How many pounds is that? Six pounds. Very light. Amen. Don't use your reason and your brain try to understand the, the move of the Holy Spirit. It's beyond your understanding. What you need to do is to shut it up and open your heart. Yeah. You know what? How many people put fireplace on the top of the chimney? How many people build a house by putting the fireplace in the top of the chimney? No. You put the fireplace in what? In your family room. Is that right? Or living room. So the same thing. The place where the fire of God is going to come in is here. The family room. Inside your, your fireplace here. Not chimney here. This is a chimney. Don't depend on the chimney. Chimney is up here. The fire of God should be inside your spirit. Welcome him by faith. Welcome him by the, by the heart. Not by your brain. Don't try to analyze. Amen. Now the mind of the flesh which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit is death. Death that, compromise, that comprises all the miseries arising from sin, both here and hereafter, 
but the mind of the spirit is life. How many people want life? Hook up to the fire. There is life in the fire, in the spirit. And so peace both now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, my flesh keep telling me. I tell you, I, re- I confess in front of all of you. My flesh keep telling me, keep telling me. Just run the church that everyone is happy. Sensitive to all the guests and seekers around here. Don't make them mad at you. Don't make, make them upset. But you notice one thing when the fire of God came to the Mount Sinai, the flesh of the Israelite ran away. You remember Exodus 19? They ran away. You know, when God showed up, the flesh started to get uncomfortable. So I either choose, I tell you, I either choose to run the church or service by pleasing your flesh or pleasing the Holy Spirit. It's amazing that a lot of people care about pleasing human beings but offend God. I don't want to offend my God. I rather please my God. And if people feel offended by God, it's their problem. Either they repent or they leave. But I'm not going to offend God to please the flesh around here. You know what? If I build the church that way to please the flesh and the carnal mind all the time, have nice program and this and that, make people happy all the time, I tell you, I'm going to have the church full of the flesh. Fighting and, and, and uh, hatred and uh, gossiping and all this stuff. The flesh is going to rise up in this church. I don't want that. Again, I want to see a big church here, but I don't believe that God is looking for numbers. God is looking for quality. Amen. Amen. So, I am tempted to do that, to just please every flesh in this room. But if I do that, I am killing the church because the work of the flesh is death, but the work of the Spirit is life. So if we let the Holy Spirit do His work, members will have life. I understand why people fall down, why people, why people laugh, why people shake and, and cry. That is, God is trying to deal with their flesh. Break the flesh. Because by nature, when you come up on the stage, you want to look dignified. But if God touch you, you cry and saliva come out and snot come out and all these things, you look undignified. The flesh is killed. So God wants to get rid of your, your, your fleshly desire. God wants you to hook up to the Holy Spirit. Amen. I know that this kind of teaching is not popular around here. But you need to hear it. Amen. 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 Look at what the Bible say. Romans chapter 8, 7 to 14. The Bible say, That is because the mind of the flesh, with its carnal thoughts and purposes, is hostile to God. How many people want to be enemy of God? I don't want to. I don't want to please my flesh to be hostile to God. For it does not submit itself to God's law, Indeed, it cannot. Your flesh will never submit to God. You need, that's why you need the fire of God to burn. And you need to follow the fire. Don't, don't follow the flesh. So then those who are living the life of the flesh, catering to the appetites and impulses of their carnal nature, cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable to Him. But you are not living the life of the flesh. Everyone say, I'm not. Living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the Spirit, the file of God. Amen? If the Holy Spirit of God really dwells within you, directs and controls you, but if anyone does not possess the Holy Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. He does not belong to Christ, is not truly a child of God. But if Christ lives in you, then although your natural body is dead by reason of sin and guilt. The spirit is alive. The Holy Spirit make your spirit alive inside you. Amen? Because of the righteousness that he imputes to you. And if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore to life your mortal, short-lived, perishable bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So then, brethren, we are debtors, 
but not to the flesh. We are not obligated to our carnal nature. Paul very talk about carnal, carnal again and again. Paul know that the carnal mind and carnal flesh is so strong in our life. He he pound on it. Amen. So he say like this: to live. A life ruled by the standards set up by the dictates of the flesh. For if you live according to the dictates of the flesh, you will surely die. But if through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are habitually putting to death. Everyone say putting to death, putting making extinct, dead the thing. I like Amplified Bible. Make you see it. The evil deeds prompted by the body, you shall really and genuinely. Live forever. Look at the last scripture here. For all who are led by the Spirit are sons of God. You know the word "sons" in the Greek language. There are two words. One word is like just like any kids, all the kids. But this word "son" in the Greek language means mature sons, mature daughters, people who are mature. The maturity in your life doesn't depend on head knowledge. Doesn't depend on how how you dress, how smart you are. The mature son are those who are led by the spirit, not by the flesh and the carnal mind. If you are mature in Christ, you always push the flesh down, crucify the flesh. You shut up your mind. Your, your carnal mind, and you are led by the fire of God. You remember when God pulled the Israelites out of Egypt? He led them by the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud. Amen. The spirit of God, the fire of God, will not only lead you. Let Him lead you. Let the fire of God lead every day of your life. Writing a song. Let the fire of God lead you, leading the worship, leading care group, talking. I even I tell you, my wife may be shocked, but even I, when I talk to my wife, I listen to the spirit of God. Because you know what? If I talk to her in the flesh, our marriage will be broken. Because I can arise them and just the flesh will fight the flesh, but I just. Try to depend on the Holy Spirit and talk to her. <laughs> you can't believe that, huh? I hope you stay in the Spirit 24 hours a day. I try to. Amen. I try to stay in the Spirit 24 hours a day. Amen. That's why you notice that lately a lot of people say, Pastor Lau, you are more quiet than before. <laughs> I'm, I'm really quiet than before. You know why? Because I find out that a lot of things that I say in the past is from my flesh. From my mind. So if, I, my, if the Holy Spirit doesn't want me to say anything, I just keep quiet. I just listen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Because a lot of time, relationship is broken because you speak, speak out by the flesh. And then you destroy relationship. Because you, you talk out the flesh all the time, people who are more mature will talk less, in fact. People who talk a lot, Many times, talk by the flesh. You have to be careful. Control your mouth. Let the Spirit of God control your mouth. Don't speak too much. Amen? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Control your mouth. Let your brain be still for a while. Let the Holy Spirit work inside you. Let the Holy Spirit, let the fire of God burn the stuff inside you. Purge all the bad things out of you. Yes, sir. Amen? all the impurities and start to grow more. Go to the next level. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3.18 that God, uh, with the unveiled unveiled face, we want to grow up from glory to glory to glory by the Spirit. God wants to change you and me to become like Christ by the Spirit of God. And the fire of God will come and burn. Actually, as I mentioned to you, this trip, God burned me too. God really changed me. Amen. God really deal with me. To change some, to adjust, make some adjustment in my attitude. We have a lot of wrong attitude inside us as human beings. Because we grow up, we learn from TV, we learn from school, we learn from the secular world. So we have a lot of things that, the thoughts that 
not according to the word of God or to the heart or the mind of Christ. So let it burn. And I want to let you know here that God will not force you to go to the next level. Let me repeat one more time. God will not force you to go to the next level. He is a gentleman. You need to decide yourself. If you say, no, this is it. I have enough. I'm fine. I grow up. I'm mature now. I have arrived. You, you have that kind of thought, that kind of attitude. God say, it's for you. I mean, it's too bad. You don't want to move on. You don't want to grow up. But I want to encourage members of this church. We have not arrived yet. We all need to grow up more. We all need to be changed from glory to glory by the fire of God. Let's press in. Let's the fire of God burn. Let s Him come and, and show and reveal anything wrong in our heart. Amen? Amen. Don't run away from the fire of God. Run toward the fire of God like Moses in Exodus chapter 19 and 20. Amen? Let Him burn the old things, the old junk out and put the new thing in. I want to tell you one thing. The file of God is not only to lead you, but it should protect you. I tell you, if you're filled with the file of God, demon cannot live in your life. Demon cannot come into your house. And that's why I noticed that there are two situations when I show up in a meeting. I notice. Now I, I, am, I am an observant. When I go and touch somebody, because of the fire, the demon has to be cast out. So that's why demon leave from that body. Because the f- demon cannot be around the fire of God, it will be burned. So demon doesn't like me. But at the same time, there are another way, another way that people will respond to the fire of God in a man of God. You know what? Run away. I don't want to get close to this man. So convicted. Some people don't want to look at my eyes. They just kind of walk away from me. It's not you. Actually, it's not you walk away from me because by nature, people need to like me. I'm a nice man. <laughs> I'm not a... I'm, not, I'm very gentle. I'm not... But you know why people kind of... I don't want to be... A, the demon inside d o n t like the fire of God in me and you. And so they will try to run away to the back of the room. They will try to run away to the door. Don't like to be around because they know that if I get close... the fire of God get close to you, they will be burned up and get out of the body, of that body. So this is what happened in the revival meeting. Either people come and be set free or people run away and keep that terrorist, keep that hijacker in your body. A lot of people entertain the hijacker. Do I call it, say the right word? Hijack. Hijack. I put ER on. Hijacker. Hijack. Demons. What, what do you call? Yeah, hijacker. hijacker. Okay, I, I do the right. Okay, <laughs> you laugh at me. I wonder I use the right word in English or not. <laughs> or the terrorists. A lot of people have a lot of guests inside them. Many Christians have guests. Keep the guests. Get rid of them. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In order to stir up the file of God inside you, you need to remember the promise of God. The call of God in your life. Be around people who love the fire of God. Association. Be around people who move in the Holy Spirit, so that you, the, the fire of God will keep burning on the inside of you. Amen. How many people have watched Kennedy Space Center? Okay, the Kennedy Space Center launched many rockets or space ship. How a spaceship can go up in the air? How? The fire and the tail. Is that right? So the same thing. If you have the fire of God, God is going to launch you out into the ministry. God is going to launch you out to do the things of God in the world, to touch the lost world. Some of you may one day go to another country to do the crusade, to have you know Christian crusade and music, and you know we we're going to go. By the file of God, but I want to remind you this: as you go out and make a few orbits around, as a spaceship, you need to come back off and on to have rechecked, to have rewire, and to put refuel. Amen. 
And that's why we come to the camp. We come to church on Sunday, Monday to Saturday. We go out in the orbit by the fire of God, and then we come back on Sunday or to the camp. And just, that's why I fly to Thailand every three months because I want to get and uh, go and then refuel them, charge them, re- rewire, readjust, and and uh, uh, inspect the, the the spaceship, make sure that it will go on and another round. Amen. Amen. We need that adjustment and refuel all the time as the spaceship of God. Amen. Amen. God wants to fill you up with His fire. God wants you to be His glove that the Spirit of God will fill you and move you wherever He wants you to go, you go. Wherever He wants you to, whatever He wants you to say, you say. If you, He say jump up, you jump up. If he says, smile, you smile. You are the gloves. I used to be in this kind of situation when I was in a kind of church organization. I remember I would sit there all day in one room and try to plan where I'm going to go plan church. Sit there 24 hours. Sit, plan, 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 plan. After two years, nothing happened. You know why? Because it's a plan of man. It's the Ishmael. You produce Ishmael by the plan of the flesh. Right. But lately, I change. I'm going to listen to the Holy Spirit. I'm going to go where the Holy Spirit send me. Amen. I'm not going to go where my flesh tell me. Amen. You know what? Because if I go where my flesh tell me, I'm going to produce Ishmael. Right. There's going to be a lot of problems later on. But if I go where the Holy Spirit lead me, follow the plan of the Spirit, I will produce Isaac. Production. Fruitfulness, life, honor, blessing, deliverance, healing. So I make up my mind now that even though we want to go and evangelize the world, I'm going to go to the country God wants me to go and God tell me where to go. If God doesn't give me the signal yet, I'm going to sit tight and wait until the right season comes. Amen. We are not going to be a horse that runs before God. We are not going to be a mule that... God tried to pull, but we never want to move. We want to go like a glove. <laughs> Don't move, we move. Amen? We move with God. We fly like an eagle with the wind of God. Yeah. Amen? And when, when the right time can be launched there, it will produce fruit. Yeah. We need to wait for God's timing. Yeah. Amen? I already have this experience. I tried to go to Japan so badly. I love Japan. I want to go, but God shut the door. Bam! I couldn't go. And I say, God, this is not fair. I complain. But God opened the door in Thailand. And God told me this. This is going to be a season. He told me. You go back, bring the fire. Bring, revi- bring revival and salvation to Thailand. Go every three months. And when you get more experience... Then I'm going to open another country. And I go bigger now because you have more experience. Yeah. Go and then we can do big crusade and because it, it takes some time to learn and to experience the things of God. Amen. This is, this is just the beginning. Amen. Amen. One day we may go to Africa. Amen. Huh? Yeah, Ron and Ginny can come. May not come back, that's okay. You can stay there. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Maybe Phil and Bobby can come with me sometime. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to go wherever God leads us. Amen. I want to conclude this sermon then. The fire of God will lead you. You need to keep burning up, burning up. Let the flesh go down, the mind, your mind go down. The fire of God go up. Everyone say, I want to be a spiritual man, a, a spiritual Christian. I don't want to be a carnal Christian. And I want to encourage you, the fire of God will not only lead you, but the fire of God will protect you. Amen. The army of Egypt can, could not touch the children of Israel because the fire, the pillar of fire protected them on the way. Protect you, keep you, preserve you. Since I've been in the fire of God, I rarely get sick. Rarely get sick. 
Because the fire of God will preserve you like the children of Israel, that their shoes are not even uh, worn out. That's thank you. Amen. They were not sick. They did not need any chiropractor in the in the wilderness. Amen. Let's hook up to the fire of God. But I want to tell you this: when the fire of God touch you, don't think you have arrived. God will work in your life little by little. You cannot handle one time clean up. Your body may not be able to handle it. Let God cleanse you one topic at a time, one issue at a time. Like that lady, that she was clean up from one demon, another unforgiveness. God want to deal with her. God may use a sermon to pull it up to the surface. God may come to talk to you about something, like to that pastor in Phuket. We need to yield. We need to say, God, please deal with me. Please change me from glory to glory. Take care. Anything that doesn't belong to you, come and get rid of them, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I have not arrived. You have not arrived. Let the fire of God burn the junk out of you. Let the word of God cleanse you, so that you will become one day a beautiful, holy. Pure, joyful bride of the Lord Jesus Christ, without wrinkle, without blemish, but holy. Amen. Amen. That's what Jesus is looking for. I believe that the end time church will welcome the fire of God, Amen. and we're gonna get there together. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, that the fire of God will cleanse every member in this church. Will burn every dross, every impurity in our life, Lord. Lord, we come and yield to you. You can do everything you want, Lord, in our life. We are hungry. We want to be changed from glory to glory, Lord. Lord, put the fire of God inside us. Help us to stir up that fire, rekindle the flame, fan the flame of fire inside us, that we will not be led by the mind, the carnal mind, and the flesh, but we will be led by the Spirit of the Living God. Yes, Lord, Father, I pray, Lord, that everyone in this church will be hungry for the things of God. Yes, Lord, for the fire of God. To you, Spirit of the Lord, do the work in me. Spirit, touch me from above. Holy Spirit, fill me with Your love. Holy Spirit, my life. Holy Spirit, tell me inside. Holy Spirit, touch me from above. Holy Spirit, fill me with Your love. Holy Spirit, move upon my life. Holy Spirit, stir me inside. I yield to you, Spirit of the Lord, do your work in me. I yield to you, Spirit of the Lord, do your work in me. This morning. 
if you have not had Jesus Christ in your heart yet, I'd like to lead you to pray that Jesus will come into your life, make your spirit as His home. Just follow my prayer, Father, in Jesus' name. I am a sinner. I need your forgiveness, Lord. Please forgive my sin. Jesus, you are the living God. You are my Savior and my Lord. I give my life to you. Please come into my life right now. I repent of my sin. I turn away from my own way. And I want to follow you. Come in Jesus right now. I will follow you all the days of my life. Thank you for dying for me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. If you accept Christ today, at the end I'd like to meet you here. I have some gift to give to you today. Amen. Come and meet me. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, me inside. Yield to you, Spirit of the Lord, work in me. To you, Spirit of the Lord, do your work in me. I would like to lay hand on a few people. Hallelujah! I like to lay hand on Pastor Da. Hallelujah! Just honor the Holy Spirit for a few minutes here. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Holy Spirit Thank you Lord Jesus Hallelujah Inside David Hallelujah Gail Holy Spirit William and Tracy Holy Spirit Inside To you Spirit of the Lord Soti In me Yes, Lord. Of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Fire of God. Right now, in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. Fire. 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 Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit. My life, Brian and Banchi, Emily, Spirit, touch me from above. Fire of God, now fill their life, Father. Fire, Jesus, mighty name, fire. Yes, Lord. Fire! Yes, Lord. Fire! Fire! Yes, Lord. Heal to you. Fire! Of the Lord. Work in me. Now, to you. Susan and Angela in me lift your hand up yes Lord hallelujah 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jordan and Kin. Jordan and Kin. Yes, Lord. Fire of God right now. Jesus mighty name. Fire. Now touch them, Father. Cleanse them. Jesus mighty name. Now. Jesus mighty name. Fire. Yes, Lord. Jesus, mighty name. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Fire. Yes, Lord. Fire. Yes, Lord. Free. Yes, Lord. Fire. Jesus, mighty name. Fire. Today. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Fire. Now, Jesus. Fire. Jesus mighty name. Now. Jesus mighty name. Now. <laughs> yes Lord Terry. Yes Lord. Love and unity happen in this home. Happiness come. In Jesus' mighty name, fire, 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 Jesus' mighty name, yes, Lord, fire now, Jesus' mighty name, fire, Jesus' mighty name, yes, Lord, fire. Heal, restore your finances, everything. Jesus, fire on me. Fire, Jesus, mighty name. Yes, Lord. Fire, Jesus, mighty name, right now. Yes, Lord. Amen. on me this place spirit for on me Ron and Ginny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fire of God. Now. Fire. Fire. Jesus mighty name. Fire. Jesus mighty name. Drink. Deal. Drink. Yes Lord. Jesus name. Yes Lord. Fire. Yes Lord. Yes Lord. Now. Touch her, Father. Never be the same. Touch her. Yes, Lord. Touch her. Touch her in Jesus' mighty name. Now. Now, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Never be the same. The file of God. File of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now. Yes, Lord. The Holy Fire. Yes, Lord. Fire. Yes, yes Lord. Joy hand together. Joy hand together. Yes, Lord. Father, use them in a mission to bless the nation, Father. Put the anointing upon them. <laughs> yes, Lord. Put the anointing upon them. Lord, that the next 10 years of their life will be, Lord, greater than the past 10 years. Fire. Yes, Lord. Fill. Jesus, fill! Jesus, mighty name! Amen. Fill! Mighty God! Holiness! Fire! Jesus, mighty name! 
worship you. Fire. Fire. Impartation. Yes, Lord. Fire. Fire. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Fire. Jesus' mighty name, right now. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We trust this message has ministered to you. If you would like more information about New Hope International Church or other teaching series, please contact us at 206-275-1042 or visit our website online at www.newhopeinternationalchurch.org. You may also write to us at the following address, New Hope International Church, 9170 Southeast 64th Street, Mercer Island, Washington, 98040. Thank you very much. 